Mr. Teru, in this math lesson, we are going to be introduced to uh, finding multiplicative inverses of matrices, or finding inverse matrices. In this lesson, we're going to define what a identity matrix is. We're going to define uh, what it means for two matrices to be inverses. And then we're going to go through a bunch of examples. The first one is finding the inverse of a two by two matrix. We're going to do that two different ways. Uh, the first way is going to just be using, you know, our previous knowledge of how when you multiply inverses, you get an answer of one. So we're going to be finding an inverse of a two by two matrix using uh, ultimately just the basic idea of multiplication and then working with uh, the elimination process to solve a two system, two variable, um, or two variable, uh, two equation linear system. And then there is a quicker process or a streamlined process for finding the inverse of a two by two matrix. And we'll do an example uh, using that process. And then at the end of that second example, verify uh, through what we see here in this definition that the inverse that we found actually indeed is. And then Finding the inverse of a matrice, a square matrice, bigger than just a two by two, uh, requires quite a bit more work. We're going to be setting up a uh, three by three matrix, and then using Gaussian elimination process and you know some you know directions that I give us uh, to find the inverse of that three by three, and then verifying that the inverse that we found really is an inverse of the original matrix. And then for our last example, we're going to be solving a three equation, three variable linear system. Uh, by writing it into a matrix equation and then using an inverse matrix that I give you, uh, you know, solve for the three variables. Okay, so let's get started. The multiplicative identity matrix, a square matrix with ones down the long diagonal from the upper left-hand corner to the lower right. Uh, okay, so we have these ones going from upper left to bottom right-hand corner, and then all of the other elements of the square matrix are going to be equal to zero. So we have a two by two uh, identity matrix, and we have here a three by three identity matrix, and, and we are looking at it specifically, it must specifically be a square matrix. So if I wanted to just do I sub four, that would be four columns, uh, except I just went down, right? Four rows and four columns with a bunch of ones. Definition of the multiplicative inverse of a square matrix. Again, we're talking about inverses of square matrices. Why we keep saying that a matrix has to be square? I'll get to that in a minute. Let A be an n by n matrix if there exists an another n by n, another square matrix, and we're using the same variable so it has to be the same size. A matrix inverse of A, or A to the negative one power if you will, except that's not really just supposed to be flipping it, you know, making it over, uh, you know, under one, like two to the negative one is one over two. It's a math function in terms of, uh, that explains about inverse, such that matrix A times the inverse of matrix A is equal to an identity matrix. Notice the subscript on that identity matrix is the same as the original two matrices, what we, you know, well, the original matrix and what we now are, is going to uh, verify is the inverse matrix. And then A to the negative one power, the inverse of A, times matrix A is again that same identity matrix. We're uh, going from the upper left-hand corner to the bottom right-hand corner is all ones and everything else is zeros. From our previous lesson dealing with matrix operations, we learned that the multiplication of matrices is not a commutative process. Uh, you know, even if the matrices are the same, sh same uh, order, same size, with the same number of rows and columns. We understand that when you take a matrix and multiply it by another matrix, the number of columns in the first matrix has to match up with the number of rows in the second matrix. Well, okay, so then, you know, we can multiply matrices together that aren't square, but to have this idea of a multiplicative inverse or an inverse matrix, we need to be able to take the original and what we believe is the inverse matrix and multiply it in both directions. Well, again, in general, multiplication is not commutative, uh, so we aren't normally going to get the same answer when we change the order. And if they're not square matrices, you know, you might have two matrices that you can multiply together, but when you change the order, not only could you get, and usually will get a different answer, but could very well be possible if they're not square matrices, you won't be able to multiply them together. So that idea of it being a square matrix is really important for these definitions of identity and inverse matrices. 
Okay, so let's get to our first example. Bam! First example, find the multiplicative inverse. Uh, did I really teach you anything? All I did was show you, hey, this is the definition of identity matrix, and this is how you check for uh, the two, in, uh, two matrices or inverses of each other. So how am I supposed to find the multiplicative inverse? You know, I haven't got to the part of the lesson where I show you how to find the inverse of a two by two matrix. And that formula basically that I'm going to show you uh, for finding the inverse of a two by two matrix is fantastic if you remember it. So if it's weeks, you know, down the road in your class or just another class or final exam or whatever, and you get to the question like this and you don't remember the formula that I'm going to give you in a few minutes, well, what are you going to do? You're going to remember that in, you know, just basic arithmetic, when you multiply inverses, you get an answer of basically one, the identity for multiplication. And with matrices, that means you get sort of the equivalent idea of an identity matrix. So this two by two matrix, again, it's square, has to get multiplied by another uh, square matrix of the same order. And when you multiply those two inverse matrices, you're supposed to get an answer, which is the identity matrix. So another two by two matrix, only now the, that, that diagonal row is all ones and every other element in your matrix is equal to zero. Okay, well, sorry about the static. I'm having a hard time with that today. Don't know why I've tried different channels on my wireless mic. Uh, but we're just going to multiply these together, learn, you know, using those math, those uh, matrix operations that we just learned about in our last lesson, and also use the idea, our understanding of what it means for two matrices to be equal, which is that they're the same order or size, and all their corresponding elements are equal. And that's going to set up our, uh, our linear systems that we'll have to solve to finish this problem out. So we're taking these, these, uh, these matrices and we're going to make sure, of course, this is kind of academic because I've made these square matrices the same order of size, but the number of columns in the first matrix has to match the number of rows in the second matrix, just to remind you of that. And we're going to get another two by two matrix. Okay, so the first row, first column. First row, first column, negative five W and negative 2y, or plus a negative 2y. And now we're going to take a look at the uh, second row first column. So second row first column, we got 4w and 2y. Now getting on to the first row and second column, we have negative 5x and negative 2z, or you can write plus a negative 2z. And now we're looking at the second row, second column, so we have 4x and uh, 2z. Okay, now <clears throat> that is going to need to be equal to the identity matrix of 1, 0, Zero, 1. Let me just make sure I haven't done something silly here because uh, I'd hate to work all this out and realize that I've made a mistake. Okay, I have not, except for I forgot my square bracket. Okay, now if this 2 by 2 matrix is equal to this 2 by 2 matrix, then all the corresponding elements have to be equal uh, by definition of what it means for two matrices to be equal. So first row, first column, first row, first column, we have 5w negative 5w minus 2y has to be equal to 1, and we have 4w plus 2y has to equal 0. We have that negative 5x minus 2z has to be equal to 0, and 4x plus 2z has to be equal to 1. Excellent. Now, we've got, you know, basically a linear system with two, equ uh, well, we have a linear equation with two variables, and we have another linear equation with two variables, so we're looking at two equations and two unknowns. 
uh, we learned how to solve that using substitution or uh, the linear combination or elimination process in Algebra 1. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to find out what W and Y are. Now, it sounds like we're finding the intersection of two lines, and I guess really kind of we sort of are, but let's not forget we're looking for W and Y and X and Z that fill up this 2 by 2 matrix. We're trying to find that inverse matrix or matrix. So we're going to add these. Now, why am I doing a linear combination or the elimination process? Because instead of substitution, well, substitution would be horrible here because we don't have any coefficients of one and that would make fractions that we might have to carry through the whole rest of the solving of the systems uh, process. Plus, we have coefficients which are already negative. So when we add those, we're going to get zero, effectively canceling out the variable of y. So we have negative five plus four, which is negative one w is equal to 1. We're going to divide both sides by negative 1. And I'm running out of room, so let's just bring it up here. w is equal to negative 1. Now, I know what w is. Let's plug that back into one of these original, if you will, uh, linear equations. The one that seems like it would be the easiest to work with is the bottom one. And we get 4 times negative 1 is equal to 2y or excuse me, plus 2y is equal to 0. We have negative 4 plus 2y. Add both sides by 4 to undo that subtraction of 4 that's over here with the y. And now we're going to undo that multiplication of 2 with the y with division. And get y is equal to 2. So now we know what w is. We know what y is equal to. Let's turn our attention, let's pick a different color, and work with this other system of, of, of equations. Again, we have a negative 2 and positive 2. So a, using the elimination process or linear, linear combination process is a natural fit here. Uh, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, canceling out effectively the z's. And we have negative x is equal to 1. Sounds like it seems like I'm getting the same answers I had over there, but uh, that's not going to be the case here and not usually the case of getting the exact same pair of numbers. Divide both sides by negative 1 and we get x is equal to negative 1. Now taking that value of x and plugging it into one of these uh, original equations. Uh, again, the second one here has less negative. So 4 times negative 1 plus 2z. I don't know why I'm writing that so funny is equal to 1. We have negative 4 plus 2z is equal to 1. Now we're going to add uh, both sides of this equation by 4 to undo the subtraction of 4. And get 2z is equal to 5. Undo that multiplication of 2 with division. And we get z is equal to 5 over 2. So our inverse matrix, the inverse of matrix A is going to be equal to, let's see here, W is first row, first column, and that was negative 1. Then we have Y in the second row, first column, which is 2. The X is in the first row, second column, so right there, negative 1. And then finally, Z is 5 halves. And that, excuse the static, I'm about to take that out. Uh, now that is our inverse matrix. Now in our next example, we're going to find an inverse matrix and we're going to do that A times inverse of A and the inverse of A times matrix A and check that this actually is the inverse. Uh, but that's, you know, I don't need to, I don't, I don't want to do that with every example just because of the time uh, that it takes in this lesson. But we should always verify that that actually is in the, the, indeed the inverse. And we'll do that in our next example, finding inverse matrices. Uh, or the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix, you know, given a process to follow as opposed to just, actually I kind of like this better, uh, just using our understanding of how mathematics works and how when you multiply two numbers which are inverses, you get that identity, all right? But uh, there is a formula for finding inverses of 2 by 2s. Let's look at it right now. No, 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 no. Bam! Multiplicative inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. If matrix A is defined with these variables of A, B, C, D in row 1 and row 2, then the inverse of matrix A 
is equal to 1 over a times d minus b times c times the matrix where we have d, negative b, negative c, a. So what we're doing here is we're going to take this sort of, uh, you know, downward to the right diagonal, multiply these values together, a times d, and then subtract that with the multiplication of the diagonal going in the opposite direction, b times c, and that's going to get some kind of uh, scalar multiple. And then we're going to sort of change the sign and the position of some of these elements, A and D, the, the uh, down to the right diagonal, they're just going to change position. So you see that D is in the bottom right hand corner, but now it's in the upper left, and A is where D used to be. And we're going to take these elements of B and C and simply change the sign. Yeah. And if matrix A is invertible, if it has an, an inverse, uh, it is invertible if and only if a times d, a times d, it minus b times c is not equal to zero because that is in this denominator. It's one over uh, whatever that uh, new value is from the product and subtraction. If a times d minus b times c is equal to zero, then a does not have a multiplicative inverse. So not every square matrix has an inverse. Okay. I'm going to cheat a little bit. We're going to use the exact same uh, two by two matrix that we used in the previous example. And I'm going to tell you, I teach math, uh, but I teach, you know, four different subjects at my high school, uh, remedial math class, and then pre-calculus, and AP calculus, and AP statistics. And though I teach math, and I love math, my memory is not that great, uh, it doesn't seem at times, and I'm not going to remember this formula. Uh, when I get around to teach in matrices the next year, if not unless I've used it, you know, throughout the entire year. That's why I like the first way I showed you how to find the inverse of this matrix, because I just had to understand that when I multiply two inverses, I get an answer of effectively one. Uh, this is nice, but if you don't remember this, if you mess up the signs, if you don't reposition these elements correctly, or somehow get this some messed up somehow, you're going to get the wrong answer. But it is nice when you remember it, so let's do that. Uh, we're going to have the inverse of matrix A is equal to 1 over, okay, now let's see here, A and D. Take those elements in that down to the right diagonal, and we're going to do negative 5 times 2 minus B times C. So we're going to do minus, let's see here, Four. Uh, it doesn't matter because you know multiplication is commutative. I can put the four first or the negative two first. I'm gonna do. Well, uh, let's do top to bottom if you will. So negative two times four. It's always a really good idea to use parentheses when you substitute. So I have that minus there that is in the pre-existing formula and the negative that I'm bringing in from the element of uh, negative two times. This is gonna become again that scalar multiple. Uh, change the position of DNA, so what was in the bottom right hand corner is going to become the element in the upper right hand corner, and negative 5 is going to come down here, and then change the signs of uh, the, you know, the value, the element that's labeled with C or that second row first column. So instead of 4 we have negative 4, and instead of 2, negative 2, we're going to change that sign and make it positive 2. Okay, so let's see what we get here. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. Negative 2, well, I guess I should write that. Um, except I'm going to run out of space. Let me do a little bit of scratch work here that I'll erase. Oh, I'll put over here. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Uh, so minus negative 8 might have probably been a, been a good idea to go, oh, a negative times negative is positive and just have that be, you know, negative 10 plus 8. So we have 1 over negative 2 times. Now, uh, this idea that a times d minus b times c is not equal to 0, we did not get an answer uh, of 0, so we're not dividing by 0, thus making this inverse undefined or non-existent. And that's going to get multiplied to 2, negative 4, 2, negative 5. And when we multiply that together, 
uh, applying that scalar multiple to each of these elements, 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. And again, 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1, or times negative 1 half. Negative 4 times negative 1 half is going to be positive 2. And then our last element is 5 over 2. So you see that we got the same answer, uh, I would hope that we would, uh, that we did in our previous example, working this, uh, finding this inverse, uh, you know, just understanding the basic idea of multiplication and, and inverses that we learned quite a while ago, actually. Now let's actually make sure that this is the inverse. Now for the just purposes of the video and, and understanding that we've already learned how to multiply matrices, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step off and reveal over here one step at a time, uh, taking matrix A and multiplying it by the, well, let's try that again. I'm going to take matrix A, not the one with all the variables in it, and multiply it by the inverse of matrix A in both directions, A times matrix A, inverse of A, and inverse of A times matrix A, and make sure that both times we get the identity matrix, and then move on to finding inverses of 3x3 three three matrices. Alrighty then, so moving on up to 3x3 three in three and, and larger matrices, but we're going to do a 3x3 three three in our example. How do you find a multiplicative inverse of an n by n matrix, which is, you know, where n is greater than 2? Just, you know, if instead of a 2x2 two two matrix, 3x3, three 4x4, three, 5x5, four four, five five, you know, there's no easy, uh, real easy process, at least if you're doing this math by hand, of uh, finding that inverse matrix. So we're going to form an augmented matrix in the form of A, with that uh, augmented line, and on the right hand side, put the identity matrix. And then we're going to perform some row operations, some Gaussian elimination process, if you will, on this augmented matrix, because I want to make the left side of this augmented matrix an identity, the identity matrix, with that, you know, diagonal of ones and everything else is zeros. And what is on the right hand side of that augmented matrix is hopefully going to be um, the inverse. So B, this new matrix that we're going to get on the right hand side of our augmented matrix is the inverse of matrix A or the inverse of A, but you want to make sure you check that answer, so make sure that you check still that matrix A times what we believe is the inverse of matrix A is the identity matrix, and if you change the order of that multiplication you again get that identity matrix, and that will be a check, and what you found to be your inverse matrix is indeed, you know, just that. So we're going to find the inverse of this matrix A, this 3x3 three three matrix. And we're first going to write that augmented matrix. So we're going to say that we've got uh, 1, negative 2, 2, 1, 0, negative 2, negative 2, 1, and 3. Augment that with the identity matrix I sub 3 on the right hand side very easy to make mistakes when you're working with these matrices, so I'm going to be very meticulous in my work here and hopefully not make any errors. I'm going to check along the way to make sure I don't make a sign error or a basic arithmetic error along this process and then get, you know, this board full of work and realize that, uh, you know, there's a mistake somewhere because then I'll have to reshoot this whole scene. And when we do our row operations to uh, get this left-hand side to be the identity matrix, uh, you should have already studied this when you were solving uh, you know, systems of equations using the uh, Gaussian elimination process or the row uh, operations process. We're going to work on getting this bottom right hand triangle uh, to be all zeros and then we're going to get this last element in the third row to be that one that we need uh, for the identity matrix and then work our way up in the upper right hand corner and get all those values to be zeros so we have that, one, that row of ones uh, with all the other elements on the left hand side uh, being equals to zero. So I can see here that I have a negative two and a positive two. So I'm already set up to go ahead and add row two with row three and get this first element in the third row uh, to be equal to zero. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna have one 1, negative 2, 1, 0, 0, negative 2, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. 
And now I'm going to, for this third row, I'm going to take row two from my, this is how I show the work, from my previous line here, I'm going to take row two and add it with row three, just to make sure that if I do make an error through my work, uh, maybe with all this notation on the side, I can see what the heck I did and find that error. And sometimes it's so hard to find your error when you're doing Gaussian elimination uh, that it's almost better just to crumple your paper up and start over again. There's going to be so much arithmetic. Negative 2 plus 2 is going to be equal to 0. And we have negative 2, or excuse me, 0 plus negative 2 is negative 2. 1 and 3 is 4. Then we have 0. Adding these two, we have uh, 1. And then 0 and 1 is equal to 1. Okay. Now, let's see here. What else can we do? I need this value now, uh, or I could really, it doesn't really, um, actually, yes. I don't really want to work on uh, making that a zero right now, at least not, or, uh, not with this first row, because this first row uh, has an element here of one. Uh, and if I try and combine, you know, like if I want to take the first row and multiply it by two and then add it with the second row, then, yeah, I'm going to do 1 plus 0 and, and remove that uh, 0 that I've already created there. So let's work on making this equal to 0 uh, by working with the first row. Well, if that's negative 2, if I could make that positive 2, positive 2 and negative 2 are going to give me an answer of 0. So for my next line of work, I'm going to leave this bottom one the same. Actually, I'm going to keep the top row the same as well. And to create a zero here, I'm going to take, uh, let's see, I need that again. If that's negative two, I want this first element to be positive two. So I'm going to do two times row one and add that. Now, two times row one, again, two times one is two, plus negative two is zero. So I can leave that second row alone. So I'm going to do 2 R1 plus R2. Now, again, with the way I show my scratch work, I'm going to go up to the previous line and mult multiply every element in row 1 by 2. So 2, 2, negative 4, 2, 0, and 0. And negative 2 plus, uh, excuse me, positive 2 plus negative 2, or 2 minus 2 is 0. Then we have 2 plus 0 is 2. Now we have negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3, 2 plus 0 is 2, 0 and 1 is 1, and then 0 and 0 is 0. Now, <clears throat> this is nice. Now I need to get the second element in my third row to be 0. I want that bottom left-hand corner to be all zeros. And now that I've got the two elements uh, in row 2 and row 3, those are both equal to 0, so I can safely manipulate or work with row 2 and row 3 to create a 0 here without being afraid of losing my 0, like I can't now work with row 1 and row 3 together because I don't want to lose that 0. Well, these are already opposite numbers, so really I can just right now add row 2 and row 3 and be in a good position. So we're going to bring this up here and we're going to not touch row 1, so 1, 1, negative 2, 1, 0, 0. We're going to leave row 2 alone, just doing one step at a time. Okay. Now, for my new third row, I want to just add the second and the third. So 0 and 0 is 0, 2 plus negative 2 is 0, negative 3 plus 4 is 1, and then we have 2, 2, and then finally 1. Now, <clears throat> I unfortunately have this, suffer from the same affliction as some of my kids where I find it very easy to make silly mistakes and not catch them, and okay, we're good so far. Now that I've got my bottom left-hand corner to be all zeros, let's start working on creating those zeros in the upper right-hand corner. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I want to kind of work my way up now. I don't want to lose these zeros either or lose that zero. 
Oh, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with static today. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to create, try and create a zero here by using the first row because I'm going to lose that zero. So I want to work my way up. And if I make that a three and I add it with the negative three, then I'm going to get that zero that I need. So we're going to, on the next row of work here, we're going to leave that first row alone again. Here's my second, my last one. And <clears throat> I want to add, let's just stand over here. I want to add the second row and third row and get that to be zero. So that needs to be positive three to add with negative three and get zero. So we're going to do, uh, let's see here. How about row two plus three times row three. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to take three and multiply it to all of these. So that's zero, zero, one times three is three, two times three is six, and six and one. And let's add those up. We have row two plus three times row three. Zero and zero is zero. We have two and zero is um, going to be still two. We have negative three and three, which is going to give me zero. We have two and six, which is eight. One and six, which is seven and 0 and 1, which is 1. Excellent. Now, I want to make that negative 2 equal to 0. And I'm going to do that by, uh, you know, if I can just make that equal to 2, which of course I can by multiplying by 2 and then add it with row 1, that is going to be 0 and I'm almost going to be done. So we're going to take row 1 and it's already negative, so I'm going to add it with 2 times row 3, and everything else is going to be the same. So let's just get that down. The last row is 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, and 1. Second row is going to be leaving that alone for right now. You can see there's nothing out here. All right. <clears throat> I want to take the first row and add it with 2 times row 3. So now I'm going to go ahead and here and do this. 2 times row 3. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And now add row 1 plus 2 times row 3. 1 plus 0 is going to be 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. Negative 2 plus 2 is equal to 0. We've got 1 plus 4 is 5. 4 and 2. Excellent. Now, I have got my 1 down here that I need. I've got a 2 here. I can divide by 2, but I don't want to create any fractions before any, you know, absolutely necessarily or absolutely need to, excuse me. So we're going to make that second element in the first row equal to 0 by making it equal to negative 2 temporarily so I can add it with the positive 2 and get 0. So on this next row of work, we are going to change that first row again. So it's going to be, except that we need that to be a negative 2, so I can add it with positive 2 and get 0. So we're going to do negative 2 times row 1 and add it with row 2. And everything else is going to stay the same. So let's get that copied down. Uh, last row. 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 1. And the second row is going to stay the same for now. 0, 2, 0, 8, 7, 1. And uh, I don't know what the voice is about, but I, you know, just to lighten up the mood a little bit. Negative 2 times row 1 is going to be negative 2, negative 2. Uh, negative 2 times 0 is 0. Then we have negative 10 and 2. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8 and negative 4. And adding those up, we get negative 2. Uh, negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2. We have negative 2 plus positive 2 is that set 0 that we need, building the lower and now the upper corner to be all zeros. And of course, 0 plus 0 is 0. Negative 10 and 8 is negative 2. Negative 8 and 7 is negative 1. Negative 4 and 1 is negative 3. And let's just make sure that I'm in a good spot right now. Oh, 
Okay, so now at this point, I'm gonna get my red pen out, sort of. You know, do I shoot the video over, make sure, you know, make it look like the teacher never makes any mistakes? Uh, if you've watched a lot of my videos, <laughs> you know that is not the case uh, with me especially. Or do now I take this as an opportunity to show you how this notation, which is what I'm gonna do, off the side of these matrices helps you to find your errors. So I didn't wanna make, you know, have you watch me sit there and stare at the board, but right here, uh, and some of you are probably already screaming at me, making comments, uh, you've made a mistake, stop, stop, row two plus three times row three. Yeah, when I came up here and I said, let's multiply this third row, by three, zero times three is zero, zero times three is still gonna be zero, one times three is three, two times three is six, two times three is six, and then one times three is equal to three. And you know when you're watching and you're not distracted, it, seeing these kind of errors are, you know, easy, but, you know, I'm trying to talk through this as well, but I still make this kind of mistakes in my work, and. You know, it's just frustrating, but it does happen. So, you know, it happens to all of us. And if it, you know, just be slow, meticulous with your work and give yourself some way of checking it. So let's try this again. Zero, two, that's still going to be zero. Uh, we're looking at two and six is eight. Six and one is seven. And then three and zero is supposed to be three. Now, <clears throat> that means that uh, now on this next line of work, see, I didn't make any notation in the second row. I left it the same. 0, 2, 0, 0, 2, 0, 8, 7. Now, that's going to be 3. And, okay, so there. Okay, now on this line of work, I worked with row 1 and row 2. So not only is this, of course, need to be changed to a 3, but... <clears throat> that's gonna change you know, some possible answers here. Now, I just took row two. I didn't multiply by anything, so that's why there's no blue marks up here. Uh, we have negative two and zero is gonna be negative two. Now we have zero and zero, and that's still gonna be negative two. Negative eight and seven is still negative one, but negative four and three is going to be equal to negative one. All right. Now, we almost have the left side equal to an identity matrix, but of course, you know, those are values of two and not values of one. So, we're gonna come up here and do one more line of work. We're gonna do negative one half of row one, and we're going to do one half of row two, and we're gonna leave row three alone because that's zero, zero, one, that's what we need and our inverse matrix, we're going to need to check it to make sure it's an inverse, but we have, uh, let's see here, negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1, 0, 0. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is equal to 1, and now we're looking at 1 half, and another 1 half, and we have, uh, let's see here, 1 half times row 2, or divide row 2 by 2, we have 0, 1, 0, now we have 8, divided by 2 is 4, 7 over 2, and 3 over 2. And our last row is already good, so we have 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 1. And that should be right here, as far as our notes was concerned, that matrix B, the new matrix we have on the right hand side, now we've moved our identity matrix from, where's that? We've moved our identity matrix from the left to the, let's try that again, from the right hand side to the left hand side, and this is matrix B, or hopefully it checks out, you know, to be that inverse matrix. Now what I need to do is step off, and I'm going to make a note that this is matrix A, this is the, hopefully the inverse matrix, show the multiplication in both directions, and verify that, uh, you know, we get that identity matrix when doing A times the inverse matrix A and the inverse of matrix A times A, making sure that this really is the inverse.
And for our last example, we're going to solve a system of equations using an inverse matrix. If matrix A times matrix X is equal to B, if that equation has a unique solution, that means there's only one, uh, then X is equal to the inverse of matrix A times B. And what we're going to do is we're going to write this linear system as a matrix equation that AX is equal to B. And we're going to solve that system uh, using the inverse given for the coefficient matrix. Now, we have been just now in this chapter, probably, I don't know what book you're in, but in my, uh, the pre-calculus book I'm teaching from, we have been learning how to solve these, you know, larger systems of linear equations. Uh, with the Gaussian elimination process, we just looked at in the previous example, or Kramer's rule, uh, using determinants. But, um, you know, in finding an inverse matrix is, is a, you know, a good deal of work. So, you know, solving this with an inverse matrix is probably not my first choice, but if I'm given an inverse matrix for the coefficient matrix, why not just speed up the process and use that, you know, if it is given or if you have an easy way of, uh, I guess, finding that with the you know, help of technology or whatnot. So, okay, we have to write it in this form. That's what we're practicing. So, matrix A is going to be your coefficient matrix. I'm going to come over here and step on uh, some school stuff. So we have 1, negative 1, 1, and 1, 3, and negative 2. And then we got 3, 2, and 1. And there's our coefficient matrix. That's going to get multiplied by matrix X. And that second matrix is going to be uh, it's it's going to be the variables that we're looking for, looking for. You know, we have three equations and three unknowns, and our unknowns are the variables of x, y, and z. That's going to be what this matrix x is. So we have not just one variable of x, but we have the unknown of x, the unknown of y, and the unknown of z. I'm putting those down in a column the same way they're showing up in the rows here in our systems of equations. And that is equal to matrix B is going to be these constants that the equations are equal to. Now again, if you're solving this through Gaussian, if you're solving this through Gaussian elimination, or if you're solving this through Kramer's rule, uh, you would be doing some kind of augmented matrix, and after the right, after this vertical line for the augmented matrix, we would kind of normally have these uh, you know, show up in the same, sort of in the same matrix, if you will. But here, they're getting their very own matrix. Now, this is our coefficient matrix, and we want to, if, if solving this equation, or an equation in this format, uh, we, you know, let's just make life easy and give us an inverse of that matrix. So the inverse of this matrix right here is going to be, if this is matrix A, then the inverse matrix is going to be, because it was for the inverse given, right? We've got the inverse of the coefficient matrix. That is going to be 1, negative 1, and negative 1, 3 over 7, negative 2 over 7, negative 5 over 7, and then we have Negative one seven. It's getting some slightly ugly fractions here because I'm making up my examples, my own examples for these videos. I don't want to get in trouble. Whoops. Okay, so there is our inverse matrix. Now what we want to do is we want to um, multiply that inverse matrix. Uh, to both sides of the equation. Solve the system using the unique given solution for the coefficient matrix. Uh, that if A times X is equal to B, then matrix X is equal to the inverse of A. Now noticing that inverse matrix is coming before matrix B. Uh, and again, multiplication of matrices is not commutative, so please do not write matrix B times the inverse of matrix A. Uh, that means that we are going to uh, now, it's going to seem like I'm not multiplying the inverse matrix to both sides of the equation, but we do now know from this, this, this lesson that A times the inverse of A and the inverse of A times A 
either way you do that uh, multiplication, if indeed these two matrices are inverses, you're going to get the identity matrix, or effectively just sort of one. So, you know, I'm doing the inverse of A times A on the left, and I'm going to do the inverse of A times B on the right, but this is just going to be one. So, I'm just going to write X, Y, Z, I'm staying on this side of the room, trying to avoid the static. Well, it's very, very awkward. Hopefully I don't get any static like that. So this is going to be 1. X, Y, Z on the right hand side is going to be inverse of A. So 1, negative 1, negative 1, 3 sevenths, negative 2 sevenths, negative 5 sevenths, negative 1 sevenths, 3 sevenths and four sevenths. That is going to get multiplied to matrix B, <laughs> matrix B, four, negative three, and five. Okay, now I've been skipping the multiplication stuff all along, but let's this time actually show it. And we have a three by three getting multiplied to a three by one and the number of columns in the first matrix are matching up with the number of rows in the second. And really, you couldn't even put matrix B first anyway because that one would not match up with the three. But uh, three columns in the first matrix, three rows in the second matrix, three by one is going to be the size of our new matrix. So, don't, want, don't know why I'm making that so tall, but we've got one times four negative uh, 3 over 7 plus 3 over 7 times uh, negative 3 over 1. And then we've got negative 1 over 7 plus uh, times 5. In <clears throat> second row, we have negative 1 times 4. plus negative 2 over 7 times negative 3. And then we've got 3 over 7 times 5 over 1. And now our third row, we've got negative 1 times 4 again. And negative 5 over 7 times negative 3 plus 4 over 7 and 5 over 1. Okay. Now, we're almost done with this lesson and I'm trying to do this live instead of just copying my notes and revealing it one step at a time. It seems like that should be really, really scary uh, because of all these fractions. And I guess indeed it, it could be, but I have tried to make this work out fairly nicely and all my answers are whole number answers. And let's see if we can't do this in our head. We've got, uh, we have a denominator of seven here and a denominator of seven here. And so we've got three times negative three is negative nine. I don't like doing my scratch work like this, but just to make sure we have it, we can fit it. We have negative 9 and negative 1 and 5 is negative 5. And we're adding. So we have negative 5 plus negative 5, which is negative 14 over 7. Well, negative 14 over 7 is negative 2. And 4 and negative 2 is 2. Hopefully the verbally talking about this is okay. We have negative 2 times negative uh, 3 is 6. Let's go ahead and do the fractions over here. So we have 6 over 7 and then we have 15 over 7. Normally if I'd see if I was tutoring kids and they were doing this I would yell at them for not showing enough work and making it messy. I'm just trying to make it fit. We have 6 and 15 is 21. 21 over 7 is 3 and this is going to be negative 4. 
So negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. And here we've got positive 15 over uh, 7. And 20 over 7. And negative 4. And 15 and 20 is 35. 35 divided by 7 is 5. 4 plus 5 is equal to 1. Uh, let's try that again. Yes, yes, I already reduced the fractions out of the way. Um, okay, see, that's why I need to write this stuff. We have negative 4, that was 35 over 7, which is equal to 5. Yes, and that's equal to 1. Let me just make sure I haven't made any mistake, and that is the solution to my last example. So I hope all of this helps you get through your complete uh, section in your book that is introducing, working with, and finding uh, multiplicative inverses of matrices. I'm Mr. Taru. Bam! Go do your homework.